Hello and welcome to today's webinar presented by Park Systems. Uh, my name is Gil Min and I'm a technical manager of the Middle Atlantic and Southeast region of the US here at Park Systems. And I'll be your host and moderator for today's event. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to go over uh, just some basics of the format for those of you, if this is your first time uh, um, participating in one of these events. Uh, today's session is scheduled for about 30 minutes uh, with followed by some Q&A session afterwards. If you have any questions, feel free to enter them in the question box uh, in your attendance panel, or feel free to raise your hand and we will address you uh, when we get a chance to answer any questions. Uh, the webinar is being recorded. And so after this session, uh, we will have this posted on our website and you'll be emailed the link to archive to this uh, webinar archive. And so before we get started, I'd like to just introduce today's session. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Park Systems, uh, we are a manufacturer of atomic force microscopes. Uh, we are based at our headquarters and manufacturing is based out of Seoul, South Korea, uh, just outside Seoul. And as a uh, AFM manufacturers, we also are interested in developing a new novel uh, nanoscale characterization techniques based on uh, scanning probe microscopy, as you'll see in today's uh, presentation. We work with a number of major universities industries and national laboratories across the, the world. And this is just an example of some of the different materials and applications uh, that we handle uh, with Park Systems. Everything from uh, material characterization to uh, looking at uh, biophysical uh, behaviors in uh, cellular bi biology, characterizing semiconductor devices, uh, looking at novel materials, things like 2D uh, layer materials and uh, polymer composites. And then we can also look at some fabrication techniques, things like uh, nanolithography or nano manipulation, doing some nanomechanics to test mechanical properties at the nanoscale. And then in uh, device design, uh, we can look at things like uh, novel materials for battery design. Real quick, uh, we make a number of uh, various uh, products in the AFM line, uh, everything from the research side to the automated industrial side, in terms of research, uh, we make um, small sample AFMs that handle uh, small samples, uh, and then a large stage sample handler that handles uh, wafers up to about 300 millimeters. We have high vacuum systems, and we can even integrate the AFM into an uh, inverted light microscope to combine optical techniques with the AFM technique. The bottom row are examples of uh, maybe systems that are not of interest for this attendance, for this audience. Uh, these are more automated AFMs for the semiconductor industry which comes with options available such as uh, robot handlers, fully automated tip exchange, and, and software convenience, things, that are, things like uh, batch recipe uh, measurements and automatic defect review. And with that, I'd like to introduce our uh, speaker for today, uh, Dr. Jiali Zhang. Dr. Jiali Zhang is a application scientist with our technical services group here at EO and Park Systems. She is based out of Albany, New York, out of our offices there. Uh, she has a PhD in chemistry from UC Davis. And with that, with that, I'd like to hand it over to Jali. And uh, I will start uh, today's presentation. My name is Jali Zhang, and uh, I'm the application scientist at Park System. It is my great pleasure here to uh, present you the webinar, Nanoscale Electrochemistry Using Scanning Electrochemical Cell Microscopy, SECCM. So here's a brief outline for today's presentation. I will first give you some uh, background information of the technique SECCM and then uh, and, uh, some overview of the principle and how it can be used first for uh, research by introducing some of the leading application examples and advantages of these techniques. Next, I will go through the actual SECCM experiment done using Park Systems NX12 AFM. And then lastly, I will close my talk with a conclusion. So scanning electrochemical cell microscopy, aka SECCM, was first developed by Professor Pat Unwin in 2010 uh, with his uh, graduate student and now assistant professor, Dr. Martin Edward and Dr. King McCavilly. It is a pipette-based nano-electrochemical scanning probe techniques and it is purposely designed to investigate the local EC property of electrode surface at nanometer scale. With this kind of technique, single entity of uh, EC measurement is enabled. Research can record uh, uh, current response or on one nanoparticles. 
An example of this will be talked in the later slides. As you can see by this uh, schematic diagram, SECCM is based, uh, usually set up on an AFM platform that makes it possible to uh, even correlate the surface topography with EC activity. So how does SECCM work? In general, SECCM creates a confined electrochemical cell. So that is how the name of SECCM came from. The nanoelectrochemical cell is a tiny droplet that's created via meniscus contacting the surface by employing a, a electrolyte field nanopipette, as shown here. The pipette usually has an opening variation from 30 to uh, 1,000 nanometer. The pipette opening size as well as the surface hydrophobicity will determine how big the meniscus uh, is. So usually the wetting area ranges from a uh, nanometer to sub-micrometer scale. So that makes uh, uh, localized confined EC com um, measurements possible. So quartz reference counter electrodes or QRCE is, will be inserted into this pipette. For example, uh, in, the, in this presentation, the QRCE will use silver silver chloride. And the pipette is usually faced with a redox mediated solution. And uh, uh, the redox mediated solution in our case today is a leucine hexamine. The micro pipette acts as an EC cell for the redox mediate to react in, uh, in each EC experiment whenever the is, uh, with the EC process are, uh, happening in this minicus. And the current is recorded during the uh, process. So now let's take a, a close look of the process step by step. At the beginning, uh, the conductive sample or working electrode is placed on the XY scanner of an AFM stage, and the probe uh, attached to a Z scanner is far away from the surface. And then the probe is moving down to uh, towards the surface via the Z scanner and uh, with the bias applied between the QRC and the working electrodes. During this process, a uh, current is constantly monitored via our smart scan software by the current uh, log window, right? Uh, as you can see here, this is uh, just a, a current offset that's near zero in the range of few uh, femtol ampere. And then when the and when the minicus comes into contact with the surface, and we can uh, see a jump in the current detected and uh, th this uh, motion is halted. At this time, a redox reaction of the electroactive species, like in here, the Russian 3 plus reduction will occur inside the minicus, and the probe itself actually did not make any physical contact with the surface. And the Z scanner position uh, can be used as a reference for the sample height. And the users can sweep the uh, potential so that uh, we can uh, uh, perform the localized cyclic voltammetry uh, to measure the EC response of this, uh, this confined wetted regions. After acquiring the first voltammetry characterization, the C scanner will be uh, retracted from the, uh, the surface uh, of several micrometer above of its first approach region, and then the XY scanner will move horizontally to the predetermined uh, surface, and the Z scanner will again lower until minicus forms on the surface. So a second a CV curve is then obtained, and the process can be repeated again and again uh, multi times across the preset scanning area. And this is what we call approach retract scanning mode or ARS mode. Uh, users can easily recall the position dependency response of uh, this kind of nanoscale region for a, a heterogeneous surface or surface with nanostructures. So since SECCN convention, more and more researchers are picking SECCN as a nano electrochemistry tool. Here are some examples. This ACS nano paper using SECCN to investigate heterogeneous electrode surface uh, with example of extrafoliated graphene and HOPG. 
They studied the redox dependence uh, spatial resolved easy behavior at graphene or graphite st step edge. And they found that uh, there is a strong dependence of the electron transfer kinetics on the uh, numbers of graphene layers with a uh, monolayer graphene have the uh, slowest rate uh, with increasing bilayer and the uh, uh, ultra thin graphite have the fastest uh, kinetics. SCCN can also be used for structure function activity studies uh, in electron materials. Professor Ren's group using SCCN to map the potential of zero charge and easy activity of metal electrode interface on polycrystalline platinums. Similarly, uh, Professor Unwin's group used SCCN to map the electrocatalyst activity especially the electro oxidation of iodide at polycrystalline uh, platinum, reveals unique patterns of surface activities with grants of a specific uh, crystallographic orientation, grant or, uh, boundaries and areas of high uh, surface misorientation identified as a potential electrocatalyst hotspots. Lastly, uh, research can use SECM for EC investigation of nano size structures such as nanoparticles. Professor uh, Weiss, Weiss Group used SECM to investigate the electron transfer at a platinum nanoparticle catalyst positioned at the interface between uh, HOPG electrodes and a uh, uh, nephew film. The reason why so many uh, research choose SCCN for nanoscale uh, electrochemical measurement is because of the unique uh, advantages SCCN has. First, the tiny uh, minicus droplet at the end of the pipette constitute a confined nanoscopic electrochemical cell for uh, uh, nano EC imaging. Secondly, researchers can freely choose the chemical systems they investigate by ch just changing the uh, composition of the solution to fill the pipette with. That makes it versatile technique suitable for a variety of chemical systems, and there is very little uh, need for special preparation of the sample. And the data interpretation is simple. A higher current just uh, represents a high rate of uh, EC reaction in the region pro. And each time the minicus touch the uh, sample surface will be considered as a new experiment. So this can easily make 10,000 experiments uh, on one single sample possible so that high throughput experimentation is achievable. So therefore, all these above uh, advantages make SECCN the suitable solution for uh, EC investigation of single entity EC measurement or correlate local EC catalytic activity with structure on electrode surface. So with the background information introduced, I'm going to switch the gear by talking to the actual experiment. So all my experiments uh, in the accident configuration form on a PARC NX12 AFN system with a precise XYZ piezo uh, scanner to control the pipette and uh, uh, sample movement. In addition, all NX uh, research system can be the platform for SECM for NX10, NX12, and NX20. So all that you need is the SECM option package, which includes a uh, SECM SICM head, as shown here, and, uh, and it contains a low noise, high precision current amplifier, and uh, micro or uh, nano pipette, and as well as a new PARC SCCN software embedded in SmartScan. So this is a, a image, a photo of SCCN SICM head with electrode insert pipette, and right side is the actual setup in NX12 for SCCN image of on um, HOPG. Uh, so, uh, so the fabrication of SCCN a probe or micro nano pipette is pretty easy and it can be done using a nano uh, micro use a laser puller and and the probe fabrication is very cheap and rapid can be done with little expertise so now you can find some uh, representative sem image of the glass pipette opening we use typically the pipettes we use is about uh, 100 to 200 nanometer so the SECCM pipette 
which is identical as SICM pipette, can is also commercially available in Park's probe store. So right now, after talking about all the hardware, we now can uh, prepare the uh, experiment by filling the solution into the pipette. So uh, right side, you can see the short video of how to fill the pipette and prepare the head. So we will use uh, the micro pipette purchased from Park store, and then we will insert the filaments connecting to a syringe and fill the uh, electrode solution into the pipette. Just make sure there's uh, no bubble introduced. It's the similar uh, step as you prepare for SICM pipette. So the solution we use today is a uh, Lucian hexane amine with 20 millimolar concentration and uh, uh, also uh, contains 100 millimolar of potassium chloride. And then redox median initial states will be Lucian 3 plus. And the glass pipette we use is 100 nanometer with 100 nanometer opening. And uh, the sample or the working electrode is HOPG surface. And uh, once we have the uh, pipette filled with solution, we'll insert the uh, silver silver chloride QRC into the pipette and uh, assemble into the SECCM head and put it above the HOPG surface. So the SECCM experiments are conducted using Park System Smart Scan software. We will use a uh, uh, vision view to uh, monitor or find the sample and as well as the pipette. And then as I mentioned, we will have the current log channel to monitor the change in current versus time when moving the Z-scanner down until the meniscus is formed and using the approach, using the uh, approach control panel. So let's check uh, the, uh, the video. So uh, we can focus on the pipette as you can by adjust the focus stage. You can see the bright hole, which is the end uh, of the pipette opening. Then if we keep moving the focus stage down, we can uh, find the uh, sample surface. And also we'll freely move the XY stage to find the interest approach position. Like in here, I choose to uh, form a meniscus on the step edge. For to approach on the surface, uh, the negative sample bias is applied so that the reduction of the uh, Lucian 3 plus would happen. And during the approach uh, process, we'll keep monitoring the current log files. As you can see, when the approach is done, the current log file, uh, the current will jump from femto ampere range to a uh, pico ampere range. Once the meniscus is formed, we can sweep the potential back and forth to get the full cyclic voltammetry uh, in the confined uh, micro, sub micro region. In the parameter control panels, operator can import different uh, bi sample bias and well, as well as uh, cycle times or the sweep speed. And also uh, users can choose different channels for output like the Z high channel, current channel, and sample bias channel, all those. And the, in the uh, position control panels in figure D, we can uh, choose the position of the interest position we want to uh, land the, make the meniscus. So the cyclic voltammetry uh, of the Lucian hexi amine reaction are run on HOPG surface at a scan rate of 10 millivolts per second. And then in here, we can see the uh, final result, which shows a typical SECCN uh, CV obtained uh, for the reduction of uh, rucine hexane amine. The smooth uh, sigmoidal sh wave shape observed is characteristic of, of the CV acquired in the SECCN form. And the sigmoidal uh, probes uh, corresponding to a coarse steady state voltammogram. And the current magnitude determined 
factor here is uh, negative. The current limit determined here is uh, negative 5.3 pico m, as shown here. And uh, the small current magnitude uh, demonstrates the power of park system low noise current amplifier. On the same position, one can conduct multiple CV cycles by using the cycle repeatance functions. Uh, during the experiment, the live current log is shown and the, all the data can be exported uh, using the software after the experiment is done. So this is uh, one, two, and uh, soon the third uh, CV curve down in the same position. So in here, we show a set of four CV curve obtained down HOPG service at a scan rate of uh, 200 millivolts per second on the same position. So as you can see here, there is very little variation between the conductive CVs and the limit current uh, con uh, detected here is about negative 4.5 pico ampere. It's uh, broadly similar to the one shown before with a lower scan rate, which indicates that a scan rate uh, in independence for the nano electro CV response. When the pipette approach, the tiny droplets can be considered as a nano electrode, and the uh, system can be considered at a steady state. So the data shown here. Uh, uh, prove that the SECC and CV measurement is repro highly reproducible and robust. To investigate the position dependence EC behavior, altimetry measurements are recorded at an array of positions using ARS mode. So the operators can use point list function to assign the location of a single CV curve to be attended, like in this. Uh, like these three uh, positions, or use a point grid function to obtain a series of CV repeatedly across this uh, two by two area with a uh, four by four uh, grid uh, manners to create an image of EC activities. As a proof of concept, we collect a series of CV use ARS mode to create an image of the EC activity on HOPG. First, I present you two individual four CV curve as position one and position two. The similarity in the EC response can be attributed to the fact that the nanopipette and landed on the same basal surface. And also the uh, cu limit current are very similar as well. So 20 of this kind of CV were collected at 20 nearby position and then illustrated through this uh, EC current map. The uh, SCCM current mapping obtained just by plotting the currents uh, measured at fixed uh, potential of negative uh, 0.5 volts. Uh, and the color contrast of this image corresponding to the current variation within uh, one pico ampere over the whole scanning area. In addition, user can also output the Z scanner position when forming each minicus so that uh, one can correlate the Z scanner position uh, simultaneously with the EC current mapping. So more systematic study can be done by just uh, generate higher resolution image using more pixels in a small scan area or use a small uh, pipettes or different redox active species. To support advanced uh, studies in uh, energy storage, such as battery studies, Park System also provides you with an Embron glove box solution for SECCN uh, experiments that require a controlled uh, environment for sample sensitive to oxygen and the water vapor. So this is uh, uh, examples of photo shoots an NX12 uh, system sitting on an Embron glove box located at the University of Utah. So uh, this webinar shows the simplicity of first commercial SECCM in assessing the nanoscale EC mapping using Park System NX12, AFM, and advanced smart scan software. 
and then current as few as uh, few pico ampere were measured with excellent sig signal to noise ratio and position dependence EC current mapping is demonstrated using uh, AS SMOS. So the re result shows uh, the possibility of park SECM mode for local nanoscale uh, EC analysis and op uh, the possibility for rational analysis and design in electrosynthesis, electrochemical en energy storage, conversion, and beyond. So with that, I want to thank you, you all for listening to this webinar and uh, thank you, Professor uh, Martin Edwards for providing feedback and suggestions for my presentation. And now... Thanks, Jiali. That was a great introduction to SECCM. If there are any questions on the line, uh, I'd like to remind everyone you can enter your questions in the question box in your, on the attendance panel, or feel free to raise your hand and we can uh, open up the voice line if you would like to have a discussion um, with Jiali and myself. So we do have a couple questions coming through. Uh, so the first question I'd like to address is, um, is SECCM compatible with the XC7 platform? Uh, um Unfortunately, I don't think so. It's only compatible with NX series. Yeah, so the, the SICM accessory is only available on the NX10, NX12, NX20 series. Uh, another question that came to the line, um, how is SECCM helpful in lead acid battery analysis? Uh, for, you know, a lot of battery uh, electrode surface have a, a heterogeneous in the uh, surface. Uh, for SECCM, because of the small minicus, it's in the sub-micro uh, area, so therefore you can determine the heterogeneous of the electrodes um, within, using the SECCM platform. And also, uh, you know, general microscopic uh, EC measurements is for this whole surface instead of all the uh, localized confined uh, surface. Yeah, I think SECCM has a has a great application in battery research design and materials for electrodes. Yeah. Uh, I just had a couple of questions in terms of experimental uh, yeah. that you showed. Uh, I know you're using a ruthenium redox mediator. Are there some yeah. other typical uh, media mediators that you can use? Yes, uh, it's showing the some of the applications. You can use uh, iodides, or you can use uh, 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 ferrocene or some uh, or the just chem a uh, redox uh, active species can be uh, used as long as it's in solution phase. And then I saw on one of your slides uh, you showed the kind of the CV sweep rates that we have control of in SmartScan. I haven't really used the system quite often myself. Um, you were showing something like a 300 millivolt sweep rate. Is uh, can we go slower, or faster? What are some typical ranges? Yes, so you can uh, easily change the sweep rate. So you can go through through uh, one millivolts per second into uh, se several hundreds millivolts per second uh, by just uh, change the uh, settings in the IV uh, spectroscopy mode using smart scan software. Great, great. We have some more questions coming through the line. So the next question is, uh, what is the fastest approach rate for your system? I think they're talking about the pipette approach to the surface. The first approach rate, I, I think uh, I did not actually go through the limit, but several uh, dozens micrometer per second to 100 micrometer per second is uh, totally achievable, and I have done it by myself. Does, this, does the SDCCM use um, a similar approach algorithm as the AFM, or is it completely different? Uh, it uses a slightly different uh, approach algorithm. It detects the current jumping, and uh, whenever at the, you use current as a, a signal to to determine when when to stop the uh, scanner movement. Great, great. Um, next question is: uh, Can you explain the difference between single barrel and a dual barrel pipette SCCCM? And I think we kind of know the answer to this a little bit. We can cover generals, but uh, feel free, Gali. Uh, I, in my understanding, uh, for dual batch, uh, dual barrel can allow you have a more precise uh, topography settings, and in here, single barrels, uh, we will have a rough uh, Z scanner height determinants. 
Right. And then also it's a more complex pipette design with two electrodes. Um, I think right now at Park, we're only focusing on the single barrel uh, technique. And so, you know, the dual barrel application is really a, a user exercise at this point right now. Um, it's not integrated into our software. Um, so uh, next following question is, can SECCM uh, do cell imaging with high resolution? Um, I think another question basically is, can the nano size pore located on the cell membrane uh, be imaged or detected? I think if it will be correlated to the previous question, uh, for the high resolution image, if you are talking about how precise the topography is, you might want to consider using the dual barrel uh, SECCM instead of single barrel, because this is more uh, for focus on the EC analysis uh, that's uh, using that dominicus instead of, uh, they don't pay much attention in the uh, resolution in height. Yeah, so I think that's a good point is that, you know, some of the resolution is dependent on the pipette pore size as well as the meniscus volume. And when we're talking about uh, like cell membranes, um, those typically are protein channels are a much smaller order than the magnitude of, of, the, of the nine pipette. So for a biological application, you know, I, I wouldn't say SECCM has quite the resolution that you're looking for for uh, membrane, membrane proteins. Um, obviously, you know, we have the resolution for things like battery electrodes and other electrochemical services. Um, another question that's related is, uh, is it possible to conduct experiments on relatively rough surfaces uh, on terms of the micrometer uh, level roughness? Uh, I think it's uh, totally possible as some of the applications they use uh, polycrystalline platinum, they are not as smooth as my actual uh, PG, I would say. Uh, but uh, as long as you have you have the uh, redox reaction happens and then the C scanner will stop uh, and while forming the minicus, therefore the height and it's done by pixel by pixels. So it, the height variation won't affect it uh, much. And so our RZ heights, what, uh, 15 microns in terms of Z range? Yes, and we have the super long one, which provides 30 micron range. Great, great. I think um, I'll make a last call for any more questions. And while we wait for anything uh, to come through the line, uh, ask a question related to sample prep. Um, so I know there's, uh, you know, you have to apply a bias to the sample in order to measure the, the current. Uh, do you have any tips in terms of sample prep? How do you, what, what are some preparation approaches that you apply the bias to the substrate? So as long as the substrate is conductive or and you have to make a uh, a conductive uh, sample. That's I don't think there is a special uh, preparation like the actual PG. I just directly use it and by freshly peel off the top layer, and you can use other uh, conductive uh, materials. And I I don't see there is special sample preparation requirements for it. Great. And I think at this point, I think this will probably conclude our uh, webinar for today. It's been a little bit over 30 minutes. I'd like to, uh, again, uh, thank everyone for their attendance to today's series. Um, if you have this session and also previous sessions from our webinar series will be uh, available on our website, as well as an email link will be archived uh, for the archive will be sent to you. If you have any general information, feel free to email our inquiry email address, or you can directly contact Jali or myself. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.